Welcome to your Barbados Today Ethan News Update for Wednesday, August 25th. Barbados will commence its rollout of the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 12 to 18 from this Friday. Education Minister Santia Bradshaw made the announcement in a brief statement this evening. She said government had consulted with the island's leading pediatricians on the matter. Several of the island's most notable pediatricians have already expressed their full support for the rollout of the vaccine to teens and preteens, with priority being given to children with chronic diseases and especially those with special needs. The consensus among our medical experts is that vaccines will add another layer of protection to our population from the spread of the COVID-19 virus. As the only vaccine approved so far by the Centers for Disease Control, the Pfizer vaccine will no doubt provide us with the opportunity to protect our students between the ages of 12 to 18 years to return to face-to-face -face classes in the coming months. To the latest COVID-19 numbers now, 26 new COVID-19 cases, 14 males and 12 females, were recorded at the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory on Tuesday. There are currently 176 people in isolation. Since March 2020, 4,720 confirmed cases of the virus have been recorded. 48 lives have been lost to the viral illness. As part of the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, 104,678 persons have received first doses of the vaccines. Additionally, 92,025 second doses have been administered. Those individuals are fully vaccinated and represent 34% of the population. In other news, the Barbados Agricultural Society is vehemently denying reports of price gouging in the sector. BAS Chief Executive Officer James Paul says prices have remained on par with the current market trends. He assures that once prices of external supplies decrease, consumers should get some relief. There are some people who might want to say that the industry in itself is price gouging. There's no such thing at all happening right now. Because what we are faced with is like anything else. We have to produce a product. We have to bring in inputs to produce the product. And the price of those inputs have gone even more than what we can expect. We are continuing to monitor what is happening on the international scene on a daily basis. And we would like to think that hopefully the prices can come down from the existing levels where they are. If they are able to come down, I'm sure that Pinnacle Feeds will be able then to look to see how they can reduce the price. But at the moment, it is what we are facing right now. And we are hoping to, even in terms of discussions with government, that some other way could be found to, to, to help the farmers, even if it is not by 100% of what is expected. But certainly, we are hoping that something could be done to assist the situation. Paul says the forecast for the sector remains bleak and pleaded with residents to buy local products. And Barbians are paying for, these, paying for these products. But on the other hand, we are saying to our local producers, hold tight. Don't increase, any, don't increase the prices. But on the other hand, when it comes to the imported product, no matter where the price is, we are seeing situations where they are being snapped up, snapped up off the supermarket shelves. You know, I, I really think that we need to examine ourselves as a country at this point in time and ask ourselves at this time of national stress, where the economy is going through so much difficulties, where we know that we must be our brother's keeper. Why is it that we can find the money to buy a much more expensive poor foreign product and a product that's produced locally, much more nutritious and better quality, we seem to have difficulty being able to purchase that particular product. It is unfortunate, but also I want to say this too, that it is unfortunate that even at this point in time, that some of our um, major retailers can find it possible to import these products and not seek to work with our local producers in order to see how they can help them. Former challenger for the Democratic Labour Party's presidency, Reverend Guy Hewitt, has publicly conceded defeat. Incumbent Verla de Pisa retained the leadership of the party with 507 votes to Hewitt's 295 during last week's annual conference. He says that his political future is now uncertain. At this moment, I can't speak definitively, for just as the Spirit bade me go Good Friday last, I will continue to walk by faith, not by sight. However, know that in the short term, 
I have some personal matters to attend to. And during this period, I will be modulating my statements on matters of national concern so as to allow the DLP leadership to speak with a single voice, and I expect energized and amplified voice on the vision and strategy that they have for us as a party and a country. However, I assure you that I remain committed to our nation and the Democratic Labour Party, regardless of wherever I am or whatever I am doing, my heart and my head will always be with Barbados. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional news now, nurses stayed away from work at several hospitals across Jamaica on Wednesday, less than 24 hours after a virtual meeting with Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton and the Nurses Association reportedly ended in a stalemate. According to reports, the nurses are upset about working conditions amid increased pressure on the health system from the high numbers of COVID-19 cases, deaths and hospitalizations, among other things. More of this report from TVJ News. Regional Director of the Southern Regional Health Authority, Michael Bend, says the Mandeville Regional Hospital is the worst affected by the nurse sick out of the five hospitals in the region. According to Mr. Bend, out of a complement of 91 nurses, only 38 turned up for the 7-3 to three shift at the Mandeville Hospital. At Percy Junior Hospital, 24 of 35 nurses, while at Black River Hospital in St. Elizabeth, the majority of nurses are at work. 34 of 36 six signed in for duty. And over in Clarendon at the Mapen Hospital, 30 of the 47 nurses turned up, while the full complement of 19 nurses reported for duty at the Lionel Town Hospital. 60% of nursing staff at the Princess Margaret Hospital in St. Thomas have called in sick. The management of some hospitals are in meetings trying to decide the best way forward, while others say it's still too early to determine whether their service will be affected. On the international front, U.S. lawmakers investigating the deadly January 6 attack on the Capitol Hill are demanding a range of documents from American agencies, including communications from former President Donald Trump's White House. More in this report from Reuters TV. The House of Representatives Select Committee asked for White House communications records on and leading up to January 6th. The panel also requested documents from the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Interior and Justice, the FBI, the National Counterterrorism Center and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. The committee gave the agencies two weeks to produce the materials, citing the need to evaluate threats to a peaceful transfer of power. The attack occurred as Congress was meeting to certify Democrat Joe Biden's presidential election victory over Trump and delayed that process. The committee asked for information on the attack as well as intelligence, security preparations and the role agencies played in defending the Capitol. Despite objections from Trump's fellow Republicans, House Democrats formed the committee to investigate the assault on the Capitol by thousands of the then-president's followers. It was the worst violence at the U.S. Capitol since the British invasion during the War of 1812. Four people died on the day of violence, and a Capitol Police officer who had been attacked by protesters died the following day. Four police officers who defended the Capitol later took their own lives, and more than 100 officers were injured. That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs> 